Nothing special here. Coming up next, a drug caper film with a message. New Jack City, directed by Mario Van Peebles. You're talking about a war out there that we're losing. You're not I've been authorized to set up an independent drug fighting unit, and I'm picking you. Got it? A ghetto drug caper movie with an anti-drug message. That's our next film called New Jack City, but even though the message is clear, a lot of the action still glamorizes street life, I think. Mario Van Peebles, who directed the film, stars as a detective who finally gets permission to assign a couple of rogue cops to capture the big dealer in their precinct. I need some New Jack cops to take down a New Jack What you call a risk? I think it's our only shot. And here are those cops, played by Judd Nelson and rap artist Ice-T. You don't have to like me. I don't even know if I like you. But we're in this together now, partner. Later, Ice-T meets with a recovering crack addict who wants to infiltrate the drug dealer's operation. Come on, I gotta get off the streets. You know what's gonna happen if I stay on the streets, man? I need something to be a part of, man. Come on. If you don't believe me, who's gonna believe me? And here are the bad guys, played by Wesley Snipes and Alan Payne. I mean, this is about survival. We ain't going out like Pusshead and Blackie lying shot up in the hallway over a ten dollar bag. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be smarter than that. We gotta look out for one another. I have a mixed review for this film too, like the hard way. This film has its heart in the right place, but I still think the picture romanticizes the drug lifestyle. I mean, compare its portrayal of the drug addicted life with a film like Drugstore Cowboy. I think New Jack City comes up as superficial. I admired it a lot more than that, Gene, and I don't think it glamorizes the lifestyle. I mean, uh, Webley Snipes gets enough money to move into a mansion where he looks at movies, but what does he look at? Scarface, and what happens? They superimpose Scarface's dead body, Al Pacino, over his uh, figure as he stands in front of the screen. A little bit later on, his girlfriend offers to testify against him to the police. He is seen in every sense as paranoid, evil, and hated by those around him, while at the same time, the cops this time are much more three-dimensional. I like the fact, for example, that Ice-T, that one cop, takes that kid that we saw in the clip, drags him out of an alley when he's totally wasted on crack, gets him into rehab, gives him pep talks, gets him going to his meetings, helps him to sober up, yeah. and is responsible for that, is doing that on a personal basis instead of just walking around with a big gun shooting. I think, that, I think that this picture has a little bit of the last film that we criticized is too, which, where, where it takes the obviously um, honorable side in terms of standing against drug addiction and toward people in the community helping uh, their fellow man and neighbor. Uh, but when the film sets up its original, I say the first half hour of the picture, I thought it was pretty standard in the way it portrays what the addicted life is like, and we all know that it's a lot rougher and not as didn't, Hollywood uh, uh, costume. Well, this didn't, well, this wasn't a Hollywood costume picture. Well, One of the things so. I liked about it was the way that the people in the movie talked in neighborhood language. There was no attempt made to turn it into dialogue that would be easily digestible to the audience. This movie has a kind of authenticity, a sense of place to it that I enjoy. Yeah, well, we differ on that. Coming up, Shipwreck.